Yeah, welcome back to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. It's now time for Today in History, and I'm going back to the year 1987. On this day, May 12th, Babangida regime renamed the University of Ife as the Obafemi Awolowo University, and that's in honor of the premier of the West African uh, Western region. Now, the Obafemi Awolowo University was founded in the year 1961, and classes commenced a year later in October 1962. Uh, this was as the University of Ife, then by the original government of Western Nigeria, led by the chief Samuel Ladoke Akintola. It was later renamed uh, in 1987 on the 12th of May uh, to you know, in honor of late Chief Obafemi Awolowo. And uh, we know that the university sit is uh, situated in Ocean State, southwest Nigeria. The school opened to about 244 students who were the first students in the school. And uh, in 1975, a new military government, you know, effected decrees making University of Ife a federal university. Uh, currently, Obafemi Awolowo University has 13 faculties. It has two colleges of the postgraduate uh, college and the College of Health Sciences, which is administered in more than 60 departments. So that's the history of the great OAU, um, regarded as one of the best universities in Nigeria. Lots of proud alumni from the school, and it was on this day in history in 1987 that it became known as OAU. And uh, one of the names that you mentioned, uh, Laduke Akintola, um, also, um, there's a, in 1990, the Oyo State University was also renamed uh, Laduke Akintola University. Yes. Um, well, in the last couple of years has been, you know, into different levels of crisis. It's currently shut down um, and has a very, very sad story with regards to education in Nigeria and the value of education in Nigeria, um, especially in Oyo State. Mm. But yeah, um, that's uh, for uh, the Obafemi Awolowo University. Let's move out of Nigeria now to Cuba. In 2019, on this day, um, one of uh, the things that we heard a lot about in Donald Trump's presidency was um, reversing um, Obama policies. And one of the policies that was uh, reversed at this time was uh, the um, laws and the sanctions that were, you know, at first uh, taken away by Barack Obama. Uh, Donald Trump, you know, in his bid to reverse some of these policies, placed more and more sanctions on Cuba. And on this day, Cuba announced that it was rationing uh, products such as rice and beans and very, very, you know, um, um, and, uh, um, uh, food items, other food items, due to a U.S. trade embargo that was placed on Cuba. It announced it is, it's um, rationing other staple foods and hygiene products due to shortages which it partly blamed on the tightening of a trade embargo imposed by the United States and also because of the crisis in Venezuela and the failure of Cuba to be able to import from Venezuela. The Cuban governor said it will control uh, chickens, eggs, rice, beans, soap and other essential items. Um, um, in uh, 2019, it is home to nearly 11 million people and imports roughly two-thirds of its food at an, annual, at an annual cost of more than $2 billion. And brief shortages of individual products have been common for years. Many shoppers at that time found themselves standing in line when the products ran out. There was also uh, situations where people rushed to the supermarkets and bought some of all these products in bulk and started selling to other citizens uh, to make uh, some extra profits. But it was, of course, uh, um, you know, uh, the result of the trade embargo that was placed on Cuba and, of course, the financial crisis that uh, Venezuela was suffering. Um, people would argue, you know, that, you know, why don't you just make your own food instead of continuing to import? But uh, the country had gone through years and years and years of turmoil and other embargoes. Uh, I think in 1960, there was already, as early as 1960, there was already um, 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 sanctions and embargoes placed on Cuba. And so over time, you know, it lost some of the ability to be able to be self-sufficient um, and of course uh, uh, 2019 was another example of when that happened mm. and it's events like this that remind nations you know that even though definitely bilateral relations is important you can't produce everything but it just places value on the importance of being self-sufficient to an extent remember when you know even here in nigeria there was that you know embargo on you know food items from the northern part of nigeria to the south and how it really affected us because of that, you know, um, the, the fact of, of the matter, which was that we, we don't exactly produce everything that we need. 
So it's really, really important for countries to, you know, begin to think in that direction because when you don't dance to the tune, they can pull out stunts like that, you know, economic sanctions and the rest. Absolutely. That's what we have for you today in history. We'll be back after this short break and we're moving into our first major conversation for today. And it is justice for Inyobong Moren. Uh, more, of course, into that story and further revelations. And like I said earlier, a can of worms that was opened by an investigative journalist, David Hundain, that comes up right after this break.